good? The time I have is now 10 o'clock, the final business meeting session of the 80th World Science Fiction Convention will be in order. The city of Chicago is located on land that is and has long been a center for native peoples. The area is the traditional homeland of the Anishinaabe or the Council of Three Fires, the Ojibwe, Odawa, and Potawatomi nations. Many other nations consider this area their traditional homeland, including the Miami, Ho-Chunk, Menominee, Sac, and Fox, Peoria, Kakasakia, Wea, Kickapoo, and Muskutin. The city specifically acknowledges the contributions of Kithawa of the Potawatomi in fostering the community that has become Chicago. We acknowledge all Native peoples who came before us and who continue to contribute to our city. We are committed to promoting Native cultural heritage. Good morning, everyone. Good, morning, Mr. Good, then we don't have to go through introductions, right? Good. And we don't have to go through procedural stuff except for the fact that when you come to the microphone, state your pronouns and your name, remember that debate need not be factual, but it does have to be civil. It really doesn't have to be factual. Uh, this meeting, as all the other meetings, is being recorded in accordance with the standing rules. You will likely appear on the recording, especially if you speak. The recordings, as have those of the previous three days, will be posted to the Worldcon Events YouTube channel. Uh, we're going to handle what's left today. So we're going to start with F5. which is fan versus pro, it's on page 15 in the short version. Oh, I, that's true, the parliamentarian reminds me that I asked him to remind me to go over what happened yesterday. So yesterday, Jesse stole my notes. <laughs> We, we passed E2 as amended, we rat ratified E2 as amended, we passed F1, got rid of F2, referred F3 to committee, oh, F3 was amended as a standing rule and then passed first time and then sent on to Chengdu. No. Standing rule. Wow. This is some harsh grading. At least they're not using a red pen. I don't remember. I haven't had that much coffee today. F4 passed. As amended. And passed on to change. The amendment was to change all the sixes in the sunset clause to eights. And for those who want to argue, they were eights, not nines. We haven't done F5, that's why we're going to start today. Yeah, we referred F6 to committee to be chaired by Sarah Felix and Lisa Hertel. We haven't touched them yet. Jared got eight questions right and two wrong. Hey, that's a B. Yeah, there's not really anything you can curve. I had it, it hasn't flown into my bloodstream yet. All right, F5, fan versus pro, is on page 15 in the short version and 41 in the long agenda um, or the PDF. There are 30 minutes of debate for this item. Cliff. While Cliff comes up to the microphone, members are reminded that we really, really, really should be out of, well, we need to be out of here at one, um, and we would really like to be out of here sooner, which I'm hopefully going to help achieve. 
Mr. Chair, I would move to refer this to a committee of the whole for not more than 15 minutes with instructions to report back to the business meeting on suggestions for referring this to committee. Uh, for clarification, this was sent to the business meeting because the Hugo Study Committee felt that it needed business meeting feedback and uh, direction in order to actually proceed rather than going around in circles with about five different views on fan versus pro. So if we could have a committee of the whole, have some discussion, and hopefully the business meeting will give whatever committee they sent this to some more specific instructions on where they want to go, I think we'll probably be able to produce something in the next year or two, at least. There is a second. I'm going to restate the member's motion as I understand it, which is to refer F.5 to a committee of the whole for no more than 15 minutes to be chaired by my deputy presiding officer to provide content-based feedback on F.5 such that when the committee of the whole rises and reports, the item can be referred to a committee to report back to Chengdu with some sort of direction for how it should approach handling the item. Yes. There has been a second. Do we need to s debate this motion? Seeing no debate, I will put the question to the body. All those in favor of referring F.5 to a committee of the whole, please raise your hands. Hands down. All those opposed? The ayes have it. Jesse, this is your mic. Thank you very much. My name is Jesse Lip. I use they, them pronouns. Uh, my correct form of address for right now is a uh, mixed chairperson. Um, was there anyone here who was not here yesterday when we did a committee of the whole? Okay. Then I'm going to run through um, some of the notes I did yesterday so that we all know what's going on. So what a committee of the whole does is we're going to take advantage of the looser restrictions on debate in order to discuss this item that's been referred to us. And then we're going to report back to the main meeting ourselves with uh, the product of that discussion. Um, once we come out of the committee, of the whole, I, as the chairperson of it, will present a report to Jared, the business meeting presiding officer. Um, if that report includes recommendations for specific amendments or other motions, such as a referral to committee, then given that that motion is properly seconded, that will be, that will be before us. Um, if we come out of it without any motions, then we'll just be back to F5 without anything else. Okay. I'll just speak up. Um, I know how to use a microphone, and it's not always shove it closer to your face. Um, so, relevant things to understand about how a committee of the whole work. Um, while we can recommend things like referral to committee or amendments to the text as part of our report, we cannot actually make that ourselves in the committee. The only motions that will be in order during this time are the motion to adopt, that is to include something in the report, to amend what we are proposing in the report, and to rise in the report, that is to exit the committee of the whole. Privileged motions such as points of order, parliamentary inquiries, those are also in order, and we can also extend debate time past the 15 minutes allotted to us with the two-thirds vote. Um, and then finally, just as a reminder that I run debate a little stricter, after someone has finished, finished speaking, I will ask, is there anyone wishing to speak or wishing to speak in favor or against the motion if we're considering a motion? Only after I have finished that question should you rise to be recognized. If you rise before that, I will not recognize you unless you are bringing up a privileged matter like a point of order. So, I'm gonna remind everyone that what we're here to do is to discuss the content of F5 so that we can perhaps come up with some specific, so that we can perhaps recommend a referral to committee with specific instructions for that committee to then come back to Shangdu. Um, so, is there anyone wishing to speak? On this order? Yes. Can we put F5 on the screen while we're talking about this? Yes, can we please put point, uh, F5 on the screen? Um, Okay, so I think the parliamentary may have to work on getting a specific slide just with that. Um, is there anyone? 
Yeah, there is a lot of text in F5, so that may or may not be terribly helpful. But the member's request is noted. Um, is there anyone wishing to speak? Um, Andrew. Andrew Adams, he, him. Um, I appreciate the work that's gone into this by the uh, Hugo Awards Study Committee, but I'm, I, as they have asked for advice, um, I, I'm not sure that trying to put a bright line on activity that goes in is the right way to approach um, a definition where the work itself is what's going in a, in a pro or, or a fan category. Um, I, I think there is a missing element here where you have an, a publication which contains some of both and there's no guidance in this as to where, where that should go. So I think that's one weakness of, of the, uh, the text as presented to us. Sorry, I, I realize there's someone at the head table who doesn't have any authority right now. Hey, hey, hey. Exactly. <laughs> Is there anyone wishing to speak? Um, ben, do you not wish to speak? Okay. Ben Yarrow, he, him. We've taken a motion that deals with the fan pro art dumped it to a committee to come back next year. I think that one way for us to find out what the general sentiment of the field is, is to see what that committee comes back with. And therefore, my feeling is that when we report out, we should report out that this should be killed and have somebody, after we see what happens with the art fan pro distinction, then come back with a new motion based on the results of that discussion. Thank you. Sure. As a, a member of the committee, oh, I'm sorry, Lisa Hertel, she then, as a member of that committee, if this committee is created, I am sure we will work closely with them. Um, that, as, as a member of the Fan Pro Committee, they will work closely with any committee that does this one. Um, is there anyone wishing to speak? Um, the member in the back with the blue with the planets? Yes. Planets. I'm young, I still have good eyesight. <laughs> planets? Planets. Thank you. Uh, Kat Kerbeni, she, her. Uh, I do agree with uh, Ben on this that it should probably go to committee. There is a lot within, within this that is vague and as a creator of content in various forms, um, the, the murkiness really that arises from this, in particular relating to money and whether or not uh, an effort is rewarded, I don't think is an accurate reflection of whether a publication is pro or fan. And I do think that we need um, longer discussion. Thank you. Is there any, can you come put the spelling? Nicholas, are you, do you have a privileged matter? Or are you just wanting to speak? Okay, is there anyone wishing to speak? Okay, uh, Ira. Uh, Gary Alexander, pronouns say them. Um, I, uh, I recognize that it's a good idea to wait and see what the fan and pro artist committee says, but I think it makes sense to send it to one committee. Um, we need a definition of fan and pro that works across the very many different cultures um, around these different types of activities in different spheres of creation, medium, um, and commercialization. Uh, so I move to recommend that the, that committee is the same one that the fan versus pro artist went to. Okay, so I'm going to take that to be a motion to adopt that in our report, 
we recommend that this, that F5 be referred to the same committee that was made for F.6, uh, yes, numbers, uh, chaired by Sarah Felix. Is there a second? Okay. Um, you kind of already spoke to it. Do you want to continue speaking to it? No, that's it. Thank you, Mr. Okay. Chairman. Now that we have a specific mo now that we have a specific motion on the floor, um, is there anyone wishing to speak against the motion to adopt? Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, may I ask a question first? Yes. If is it's this a motion? Oh, hang on, let me come up. Fair enough. Kate Secor Sheher. I understand that this is a motion to add a thing to our report, but it is not a motion to rise in report so we can keep going and add other things to our report? Correct. Okay, cool. That's what I wanted to do. Yep. Okay. Is there anyone wishing to speak against the motion to adopt? Um, carry on. Harry and Lurie, she, her. While I understand that these these issues are related, I believe that if we make it a single committee, it will have too many members and nothing will get done. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor of the motion to adopt? All anyone else there wishing to speak against? Wait, was there, sorry. Okay, can the person who is wishing to speak in favor raise their hand, I didn't see you. Well, okay, okay. I'm willing, I'm, if we're willing to call the question, I'm willing to. There was a motion to call the question. Okay. I, a, I didn't hear the motion to call the question. B, the presiding officer will remind people that calling the question is not a privileged matter. So I do have to recognize you for you to do that. It's not a shouted out thing. Um, given that the board and committee of the whole and we can be a little loosey goosey, is there any objection to moving on a vote, moving to a vote on this section, this motion to adopt? Seeing none, we're going to. Elspeth, are you objecting to moving to a vote? <laughs> okay. Okay, so right now what's before us is a motion to adopt, which means just to include some stuff in the report, not to leave the committee and make the report, but just to include some language in it. Right now the language that has been um, moved to add to that report is to refer F5 to the same committee that F.6 has been referred to. So if you, so voting in favor of the motion to adopt means that that will be part of our report and that that will be one of the things that I say that the committee wants to do when we come out of the committee. Voting against it means that we'll, I mean, either way, we'll still be in the committee of the whole. Voting against it means that we won't have anything in our report yet. Where is it appropriate to add instructions to that committee? Um, if it passes, then you can amend and we can add instructions. Okay. If it doesn't pass, you can still add instructions to a committee that doesn't exist yet. Um, so, is there any other objection to voting on the motion to adopt? Okay, seeing none. Those in favor of including in the report that we recommend referring F5 to the same committee as F6, those in favor, raise the hand. Those against, okay, I'm going to say the ayes have it. And so currently the motion to adopt, um, ha or sorry, the report of the committee says that we recommend refer Essex to the same committee as F5. Um, is there anyone wishing to speak? Um, Jerry. Jerry dash off he, him. I move to adopt that the committee be instructed not to try and distinguish based on the expectation of sale or not sale, as that is very hard for anyone other than the creator to determine, but perhaps on first usage or first presentation. So I want to make sure you understood this. So you are you are moving that we technically amend the motion to adopt the amend the report um, that we're, that we include instructions that the committee that F5 is referred to be instructed to not 
to not define based on expectation of whether something is for sale or not for sale, is, or, or is created for sale or not for sale, but perhaps something like first usage or presentation, correct? Okay, I heard a second. Um, is there anyone wishing to speak in favor of this amendment to the report? Yes. Uh, ben Yellow, he, him. We already have an existing committee with its instructions. Would Jared's motion affect if, as it looks like we might do, dump it into the same, dump F5 into the same committee that has dumped it, that is dealing with F6? Does Jared's motion give instructions to the committee on what to do in the art categories when that was created without said instructions, but it's the same committee. So I don't know whether this means yeah. we are or are not instructing them on what to do with the art category. So I so I believe that parliamentarily speaking, we are we will be instructing them only on F six unless we decide to do some shenanigans and like add some additional F five instructions. However, they are free to hear those instructions for F6 and decide that perhaps that is also the sense of the business meeting for F5 is, or sorry, the instructions on F5 and feel that that is perhaps also the sense of the business meeting on F6 or they're free to hear the instructions on F5 and say, no, we don't think that applies to F6. It's, it's up to the committee to, at that point, to decide if they want to reference those instructions on F6 as well, but currently we, the instructions would actually only be applying to F5. Does that make sense? Cool. Um, Elizabeth, do you have a privileged matter or are you just wanting to speak? Um, I like to speak. Okay. Um, so we had, wait, we had the amendment. So is there anyone wishing to speak in favor of the amendment to the report? Is there anyone wishing to speak against the amendment to the report? The, the person in the orange mask. Um, yeah. Dave Powell, be they. Um, uh, I certainly appreciate the thought behind wanting to get the, the creator's intent out of it, but I think that is um, in a matter this fuzzy and nebulous too important to be excluded entirely. That that it is one of the considerations. That that you know what do most people think it it looks like to them is part of it. You know what do the voters say? What does the what does the creator say? What does the person who worked with the creator, their editor, or the, the publication, or the the source say? All of these things are relevant, and none of them should be excluded for the committee to consider. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor of the motion to amend? Um, yes. <laughs> Parliamentarian, move your mouse. Okay. Are we? Cool. Okay. Um, Terry, you were wishing to speak? Terry Neal, she, her. I will note that based on the um, reports coming out from the Hugo Administrator that it appears to be common for the Hugo Administrators to discuss eligibility with the potential finalists. Several people this year were eliminated based on them saying they were not eligible even though they were nominated. I think we can trust the creators and the Hugo Administrators to work out things where they know more than the nominators do. Um, so, I mean, so, Martin, do we have any of the pink slips, the slips le left? Uh, the pink slips should be in the back. Okay, can you run one to Mr. White because I keep not seeing you. Sorry. Um, okay, is there anyone wishing to speak against the motion to amend? That was against, sorry. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor of the motion to amend? Um, I'm going to recognize the person in the back. 
because I think I saw you like stand and sit and stand again. John Lorenz, no preference. Uh, as a former Hugo administrator, I know that uh, a lot of times the people being nominated don't know whether or not they're eligible because the rules are so fuzzy. So I think we really need to come up with guidance that works for them as well as for us. I completely, that was against, right? Or in favor? That was in favor. I, don't, I apparently done a binary state switch in my head, sorry. Okay, is there anyone wishing to speak against? Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Carry on. All right, Perry and Marie she, her. So even if the people being nominated know which category they think they belong in, the people doing the nominating don't. And we need to give clearer guidance to the people doing the nominating in the first place. Okay. Can I get a time check on where we are in our 15 minutes? Six and a half. Six and a half minutes, okay. Um, is there anyone else wishing to speak on the amendment to the report? Okay, Joshua. So to be clear, uh, thank you, uh, Joshua Crundall, he, him. Uh, so to be clear, the expectation was totally my wording. And the reason that we used expectation after an enormous amount of wrangling, uh, as I'm sure the other committee members will attest, whether or not they agree with my wording, um, was that we have pro that there were problems with dealing with uh, the question of stuff that is first released under a paywall. Um, and then say a week later is released for free is generally perceived as free by um, the populace, but um, also um, has some amount of money going in. Um, and that can be something where the nominators really want to nominate it for um, a fan award, but uh, the rules, if, uncare if uncarefully considered, um, will end up going for pro. I'm not saying we necessarily don't want to go with this particular uh, wording, uh, but it's worth thinking about uh, where the committee wants it. Uh, uh, I have other stuff to say, but I think it's not germane to this particular amendment. Thank you. Is there anyone else wishing to speak on the motion to amend planets? <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Um, Kat Corbetti, she, her. So the main reason I personally disagree with the money versus no money definition uh, proposed in F5 is that it disregards the current economic climate and the way in which fan content can, like, a fan writer or a fan publication can fundraise, and they should be able to. Fan labor is labor, and I think we need to come up with a better definition that allows for this, because it's 2022, and things cost money, even if they're online. And people fundraising towards their labor, even if it is fan content, should not be penalized and lumping them into a pro category that is not correct for the kind of content that they produce. Fan casts are like this. Some fanzines are like this. Some fan publications that very clearly create fan content. They talk about fanishness and science fiction in general and analyzing things. And those people, like, it's work. It's work. And I think that we should be able to recognize it as such. And a better definition that does not involve money should be considered. Thank you. Is there anyone else wishing to speak on this amendment? Um, I believe the member in the back and the plaid has not yet spoken. Okay, the question has been called. 
Um, is there any objection to moving to a vote on this uh, amendment? I see none. We're going to. What, are you objecting? No. Could you restate the amendment, please? Yes. You gotta let me finish saying that the question's been called. Okay. Seeing none, we're going to move to a vote. The matter that is before us is the motion to amend the report of the committee to include the committee, sorry, the report of the committee of the whole to include that the instructions um, that, the, sorry, that when we recommend that F5 be referred to committee, that the instructions to that committee include um, to look at not defining based on expectation of whether something is for sale or not for sale, but perhaps something more like first usage or presentation. All those in favor of the motion to amend the report, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against? Okay, and the motion passes. So our report as currently stands um, is to refer F5 to the same committee as F6 and the aforementioned instructions that we just voted on. Um, is there anyone wishing to speak? I'm gonna recognize Mr. White because I've accidentally skipped over him a few times. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson, I appreciate that. Um, Nicholas, Nicholas White, he, him. Um, I would like to propose a further amendment, which is to instruct the committee to consider whether a global definition of FAM versus PRO is necessary, or whether a category by category approach would be preferable. May I explain why? Do you want to type in? Second. I hear a second. Okay, so I'm gonna restate the question before you speak to it. Um, so the amendment which has been seconded is to um, include further instructions um, that the committee consider whether a global definition of fan versus pro is necessary or whether a category by category definition is preferable. Is that correct? Okay. And yes, uh, you would like to speak to it? Sure. I, uh, two very brief points. One of them is that the, the fan versus pro question for artist is urgent and important for Hugo administrators. We keep on running into the problem of uncertainty from nominators and from the nominees as to whether they are eligible in these categories. And indeed, we do engage in dialogue with the nominees, but it is often from a basis of ignorance on their side and ignorance from the voters' side as to what they have been nominating people for. We need clarity and we need it now and we need it in those categories particularly. Uh, my second point, more generally, one of the earlier speakers, I think Ms. Corvettia was, uh, made the point that we're now in a very different situation where fan work is labor and should be recognized perhaps as such in certain ways. It seems to me that it would be very difficult to construct a definition that applies equally to the art categories, which are in a special and urgent situation, and to writing, and to fan casting, and to the production of fanzines. It seems to me that perhaps we need to upgrade the definition of each category separately rather than go for a global definition. Now, I'm not asking this body to decide on that now. I am asking this body to make the recommendation to the new committee that it consider that question. Thank you. Is there anyone wishing to speak against the amendment? Okay. Josh, Joshua? Joshua Crowngold, he, him. So here's the thing. We have in this group, okay, um, we have this group of fan categories, um, and we are attempting to distinguish between fan categories and professional categories. Um, in general, yes, no, labor for fan stuff is unpaid, unless we use a different definition than a matter of payment. The fact that people are discussing fan activities that they are calling themselves fans, if they are making a living from this, if they are paying for their labor um, and charging for their labor, 
That is not a fan activity unless we make a distinction in a completely different place. We are attempting to distinguish between things that are fan, that, um, that are us doing things for the love of it, whether or not they're the people in this room, um, or the people at this convention, or professionals who are doing this in order to be paid for their labor and be able to put food on their tables. If they are doing, if they are attempting to get food on their tables through this activity, it isn't fan. So that's one thing: is that we have a sense of what's going on, of, of what's going on, and we have made this distinction, and we're going to continue to make these distinctions. We may very well come up with other categories that we don't have yet considered um, in this room, or have considered and rejected. I don't know. Um, that attempt to use this definition. But the other thing is that we have created a committee that is largely um, interested in art. Um, and we are going to be sending this um, me measure to that committee that is currently largely interested in art. It's possible that committee will change its structure, will invite new members, and will reconstitute itself somewhat in order to be able to be better to deal with this thing, uh, problem. But now we are saying, oh, also, you should decide whether um, you should have a different definition for art and everything else, or um, every fan category should have a different definition, or whether you should have a global definition. Well, as currently constituted, they're going to go with the easy path. They're going to say, well, art should have a different definition. That is, in fact, what we gave them, is this separate definition for art that works for art and doesn't necessarily work for everything else. I don't think we should take the easy path. I don't think we should ask them to take the easy path. I think we should ask them to take the good path, where we have a consistent definition of what fan category means to us, that we are then telling the world that this is fan stuff, everything else is professional, and has to compete against other professional works. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor of the amendment? It's chairperson. Yeah. 48 seconds remaining. Okay, we have 48 seconds remaining in our uh, time for the Committee of the Whole. Because we're in a Committee of the Whole, I'm going to uh, ask everyone to sit. I'm going to ask for the sense of the committee. Um, so I'm going to ask for our sense if we want to extend debate time. Um, for those who would like to extend debate, please raise your hand. Great. For those that don't want to, please raise your hand. Okay. Given that we have 48 seconds, I'm going to pause and see if anyone wants to rise to be recognized. Uh, Kevin. Kevin, Stan Kevin Stanley, he, him, uh, next chairperson, I move to extend debate by raising it to 10 minutes total. 10 additional minutes total. We'll have 10 minutes, just you've got 48 seconds, let's bring it up to 10 minutes even. Okay, so we will have 10 minutes remaining, so we're adding nine minutes and 12 seconds, cool. Okay, um, are there, is there a second? Cool. Are there any objections to uh, raising debate or increasing debate in that way? Hearing none, uh, the time on the clock is reset to 10 minutes. Um, are you rising for a privileged matter or to speak on the? I'm not sure, but I think so. Okay, give it a shot. I had, I had a question about the wording that I don't quite understand, which may be relevant. Dave Howell, uh, he they. Um, so the the material is is recommending to the committee. Is the committee bound by these things? No. Okay, that's all I wanted to know. Um, okay, so I believe we just had a motion again, or a, sorry, a speech against the amendment, correct? Cool. Okay, is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Um, the, actually, Ron, I think he spoke yesterday. Ron Oates, he, him. As I recall, the definitions of fan versus pro were added relatively recently, as in sometime after two, at, at or after 2008 when I started attending business meetings. And they were added in part to help with the definition of semi-prosy. They are not a long time historical document within the WISFIS Constitution. They are not, were, prior to that, the definitions were category by category. Since that time, the definition of fan art 
fanzine, fan cast, which was added since then, and their appropriate definitions of what the pro professional equivalents thereof have shifted within both fanish culture and popular culture. It is perfectly reasonable that we reconsider those, and there is not, in the current time and culture, a consistent definition of what a fan writer is versus a professional writer, or what fan writing versus professional writing is, nor is there a consistent definition of what a fan art versus professional art, or fan podcasting versus professional podcasting art. There, you cannot draw the same line between fan and professional in those three categories, or actually fanzine and professional zine. These are distinct individual items. They each need their own definition. Thank you. Is there a question? Yes. Okay. Just in general, if it's like, I want people to know if it's a quick thing and you can shout it. I will restate it if you feel like it would be better I, in front of the microphone. I, also I just don't not read. sure that I can do this quickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. I understand it. My question is, uh, Dave McCarty, he, him. My question is, uh, if it, it, we have a motion that's that's on the that's on the floor, mm -hmm. is anything that that speak, that tries to amend the motion is that technically speech against or is that speech for? Or is it neutral? It, so, so this is a committee, so everything's a little more. Eh. It, it, um, so, is it at any time it's, it's in order? Yeah. Can we do second order amendments in a committee? Yeah, we can. Okay, I thought so, but yeah. So okay. yes. All right. Cool. So, yeah, you can feel free to amend whenever you want. Um, okay. Is there anyone wishing to speak? Okay, we are going to take a quick 30 to one second, 30 to 60 second pause, sorry. Okay, we're good to go. Um, that was speaking favor. Uh, is there anyone wishing to speak against? Um, I, we're going to try this again because everyone popped up before I was done. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Dave? Dave McCarty, he, him, everybody note the time. I'm about to say that, in general, I agree with Nicholas White, and that's really freaking rare. Um, um, however, I would, I would like to uh, move to expand on Nicholas's uh, suggestion of, of, ex of splitting category by category to add that, if people agree with me, that it is the sense that, given the, the way the world is, um, that, uh, things have multiple uses over their life. And if something is used as fan in some way, fan art or fan writing, later sale does not disqualify its fan use. So something does not have to be only fan art and never anything else. It could possibly be sold later as long as there is a qualifying use as fan art. So that we don't try to say that, well, what is this? It's this or that. There's a duality there. There's uh, quantum mechanics. It can be both. We can make fan art and feed ourselves. Thank you. Okay. Is there a second? Okay. So the amendment from the member is to, so we have Carly on the floor. We have uh, Nicholas's amendment to the report to include um, instructions to consider whether a global definition is necessary or if we should do category, category by category. And the amendment that was just made is to add to that, that it is our sense that things have multiple uses over their life. And I'm gonna say we gotta close that, sorry. Um, and if something is used as fan art or fan writing, later sale does not disqualify it from still being fanish and that things can be both. Is that capturing the sense of what you said? Perfectly. Okay, um, it has been seconded. Um, I'm going to, you kind of already spoke to it. Um, so is there anyone wishing to speak against that amendment? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Second. The question is, 
The question has been called and seconded. Um, so this motion is to end debate on all of the matters currently before us. Yeah. Uh, Parliament, uh, Andrew Adams, he, him, Parliament's inquiry, would that also include a motion to rise automatically or the debate okay. generally? So concluded? I'm going to keep speaking as though you had me at the parliamentary inquiry and I'm probably going to answer your question. So the question has been called on all the matters that are before us. The matters that are before us are Dave McCarty's amendment to uh, Nicholas White's amendment to the motion to adopt. So we would be voting on, Chair is going to finish speaking. Uh, we would be voting on Mr. McCarty's amendment to add the thing that things can be both, and then we would be voting on Mr. White's amendment about a global definition versus individual categories. Um, those are the two matters before us. We do not have a motion before us to rise and report, so after both of those uh, votes have been called, we would still be in committee of the whole. Okay, did you have a privileged matter? Yes, point of order, Mr. Chairperson. Did we have a speech against the underlying amendment and against the pending amendment, and therefore would a motion? I do not believe that the motion to call a question would be in order absent a speech against if anyone wanted to make one. You are correct, except that we're in a committee of the whole, and so I'm not sure that's true right now. Um, yeah, but we're not in the business meeting right now. We're in a committee of the whole. Yeah, it's weird. So instead, I'm going to ask the body if there's any objection to calling the question and closing debate. I do see an objection. Um, are you wish were you wishing to speak against the amendment? Okay, so just for the sake of fairness, I'm going to allow a speech against, and then we're going to get the sense on calling the question again. Harry and Lori Sheher, while I agree with Mr. McCarty's idea, that did not actually provide any guidance to the committee. We need to say that they need to figure something out about how to deal with these things, which we did not say. This, that was debate, not a point of order. So, um, okay, is there any um, objection to the to calling the question and ending debate on both of the amendments? Okay, seeing none. The first matter before us is Dave McCarty's amendment to include in the instructions that it is the sense of the group that things have multiple uses over their life. If something is used as fan art or fine writing, later sale does not disqualify it from being fanish and that things can be both. All those in favor of the amendment, please raise the hand. Okay, all those against, thank you. Um, and so now we are moving directly to a vote on uh, Nicholas White's amendment to the report that we instruct the committee to consider whether a global definition of fan or pro is necessary and whether a category by category definition is preferable. And then as amended, it also includes that it is the sense of the group that things have multiple <coughs> uses over their life, et cetera, et cetera. Yes? Uh, sorry. Uh, ben Yellow, he, him. Uh, you didn't announce the result of the vote. Correct. Uh, the eyes have it. I say it in my head, like as the vote's happening, and then I forget to say it, like after I've told you all, put your hands up. My apologies. Um, okay, so are we still clear on what the current matter that we're voting on is? Okay, hearing no one say shout no. All those in favor of Nicholas White Amendment as amended by Dave McCarty, please raise the hand. All those opposed? The ayes have it. Um, and so now our report. Um, is referring to the same committee as F6, instructions uh, not to find an expectation of sale, but first use or presentation possibly, global definition of fan or pro versus category by category definitions, and things can be both. I'm creating short titles as we go. I hope that's okay. Um, uh, parliamentary inquiry from somebody. How much time is left? Four minutes and 58 seconds. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone wishing to speak? Uh, Don? You can just, okay. Now, on these leave, yeah, I listened to uh, the debate here, and uh, based on that, I got to move to. Sorry, I, I said this is Don Lee's leave, he here. I listened to the debate, and based on that, I'd like to move to amend the report that. Uh, 
the committee should consider the benefits of a vague definition that depends primarily on the wisdom of the nominators. Second. Yeah. Okay, there was one? Okay. Okay, so the amendment has been moved and seconded that the committee should consider the benefits of a vague definition that depends primarily on the wisdom of the nominators. Uh, do you wish to speak to that? I think it's self explanatory. Okay. Um, is there anyone wishing to speak against? Um, the person in the blue in front of Nicholas, sorry. Clark, where did he him? I really think that the vague issue is what we're trying to solve. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and another thing about the bait that I forgot to mention, I will instruct the timekeeper that when I'm, uh, you know what, to give me the whole, never mind, it's fine. Normally when I'm presiding, I include, I count applause as debate, but since we're in committee, the whole, whatever. Um, okay, is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Uh, Kevin? Or actually, I'm sorry, I'm going to recognize the gentleman in the back. Um, the chair is acknowledging that sometimes I fail to see, see people. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Chair. And that is an unseen person. I appreciate that. Uh, Lou Walkoff, he, him, I'd like to amend the, the motion that in addition to vague, that a very specific and well-documented uh, set of rules exist regarding dividing professional from amateur activity. And that, God help us, is the rules specifying that of the Internal Revenue Service, for which there are counterparts in uh, at least a couple of other countries that came up on the search I did. Uh, if we're going to tell them to be vague, tell them to also consider what you can get out of being specific. So my understanding is that the motion to amend, well, okay, is there a second? Second. Okay. So my understanding is that the motion to amend is to take Don's amendment that the committee consider the benefits of a vague definition and also instruct them to include the benefits of a specific definition. Is that correct? Uh, Matt, the yeah, mask is quite yeah. a privilege. Please wait for the, for the mic to come to you and keep your mask on. I was referring to the specific rules of the IRS. They are probably a lot more specific than they want, but they do specify and have been enforced in court uh, as to what is the definition between professional activity okay. and amateur activity. Okay, so I will restate. So the amendment is that in addition... So the original is to consider the benefits of a vague definition and amending that to include, to also include the benefits of a very specific definition such as those in the rules of the IRS. The, yes, the United States IRS, thank you. Or it's equivalent in, yeah, okay, yes. The, very, the benefits of a very specific definition such as those defined by the United States Internal Revenue Service or counterparts or equivalents in other um, countries. Is there anyone wishing to speak? Um, so I feel like we've already had a speech in favor. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Um, yes. Uh, yes, the chair will restate that your mask needs to cover your nose and your mouth. And I'm also going to, um, because I only have so much brain, I'm also going to instruct the, um, the, the floor manager to just be on top of that, please. Um, okay, is there anyone wishing to speak against um, the fun rainbow tiger? No, fox? He knows which he is. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Jefferson. Um, Rafe Richards, he, him, uh, very briefly, we are starting to shackle this committee with far too many recommendations and instructions. Okay, thank you. Um, are you ready to be for a privileged matter? 
Okay, is there anyone wishing to speak in favor of the amendment? Joshua? Uh, uh, okay, the question has been called. Second. Is there a second? Okay, um, is there anyone, or is, are there any objections to closing debate on seeing an objection? Um, can anyone still wishing to speak on the amendment um, that is currently before us, which is the one about also including instructions about specific definitions and the Internal Revenue Service. Can anyone still wishing to speak on that? Please raise the hand. Okay. Um, all those in favor of, this does require a two-thirds vote to close debate. All those in favor of closing debate on this amendment, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against? Okay, I'm going to say that the ayes have it and that debate has been closed. Um, so you're going to move to a vote on the amendment to include instructions about the benefits of specific definitions such as those in the rules of the United States Internal Revenue Service or its counterparts in uh, other nations. All those in favor of the amendment, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against? Okay. The no's have it. Um, and. That amendment is not adopted, so the matter before us is now Don's amendment to include that the committee should consider the benefits of a vague definition that depends primarily on the wisdom of the nominators. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? How are we doing on time? Left? Three and a half minutes left. Leslie Turek. Uh, she heard. Um, I understand the desire for having things pat, but we've struggled for a long time to find a definition that includes what traditionally we have understood to be fan work. And I would like to leave them the option of concluding that it might not be possible. Um, the, the rules that talk about earnings really exclude many things that we've traditionally considered to be fan work. I mean, I used to sell my fanzine for 50 cents. Um, fans put their art in the art show. Um, the, the, def the difference, we all kind of understand it, but it's very hard to put into to facts. So I think that it should be left open. If, if they cannot come up with something that includes the universe of what we traditionally have considered to be fan work. Um, that was a speech in favor, correct? Yes, okay. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? Okay, Lisa. Um, first of all, anyone who, oh, I'm sorry, Lisa Hertel, she's a, um, anyone who doesn't get to speak and would like to talk to me afterward, feel free. Uh, but the problem that we have is that we've been vague and past chief of administrators have asked us to not be big. Okay. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Okay, the question has been called. Is there a second? Second. Okay, is there any objection to uh, closing debate on this amendment? Hearing none, we're gonna move to a vote. The amendment currently before us is to add to the report that the committee should consider the benefits of a vague definition that depends primarily on the wisdom of the nominators. All those in favor, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against? Okay, and the motion fails. And those, that is not going to be added to our report. Um, is there anyone wishing to speak? I'm gonna go with a wall, because I don't think he's spoken yet. Dave Wallace, he, him. I would like to uh, propose an additional amendment that we ask the committee to consider the distinction between collecting money to put food on the table, as it were, that, that goes to the personal benefit of the creators versus collecting money for expenses. And this may be a Patreon versus um, a Kickstarter type distinction, but uh, it, it is my sense that, that, yeah, actually that's me, but that was just. Okay, um, so it's been seconded. So 
I'm going to restate your amendment. So my understanding is you're saying to include instructions asking the committee to consider this distinction between collecting money for expenses related to the work versus for the benefit of the creator. Correct. Okay. It has been seconded. Do you wish to speak in favor? Uh, yeah, again, just uh, the, the sort of the obvious profit versus non-profit type distinction of activities here and somebody doing a Kickstarter that's basically just fun doing the work itself as opposed to, as, as people say, putting money on the table seems to me something that's eminently possible and I'd just like the committee to keep that in mind. Okay. Is there any, anyone who should speak against the amendment? Um, Mr. Cliff. Mr. Chair, Cliff Dunn, he, him. Uh, Mr. Chair, I wish to amend the amendment to include the language and which ensures that all, all activities shall be considered fan or pro. If I could have a second, I would, will explain. Okay. So the amendment, I'm going to state it first so that we're all clear on what this is. Um, so the amendment, as I understand it, is to include the words to the bit about collecting money for expenses for, to the work versus benefit of the creator and add to that, and which ensures that all activity shall be considered fan or pro. Yeah. Okay. You need to be in favor. Yeah, make sure that the reason I will. Oh, I'm sorry, do we have a privilege matter? Yes? Andrade T. Hen, which chairperson appoints for order. That would be contradictory instructions, I believe, given uh, Dave McCarthy's previous amendment. Hold on. Yeah. I'm going to say that it was an inclusive or and not an exclusive or, unless Cliff wishes, wishes to correct me. I believe the point is to have, not to have things that are neither. Correct. Not, not to say it belongs in this box or this box. Correct, and I would accept the chair rephrasing it. <laughs> okay. Um, may, may, may I have my speech now? Yeah, you may while I figure out how to rephrase that. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Very briefly, there has been an issue at times when, when activity is somehow not fan because of some aspect of it, but it's also not pro because of some other aspect of it. And so administrators have been finding themselves in the position of ruling things, well, it's not fan and it's not pro. Um, we need to avoid there being a gap between the two definitions at the bottom of the line. Sorry, I'm, you know what, I'm going to say that I'm not going to try and rephrase it perfectly, but we're just going to include in our instructions and be very clear that we're being inclusive here and not exclusive. Um, okay, is there anyone wishing to speak against? Jared? Okay, sure. Those require different votes, but we'll do it. Um, okay, the, mo the second, hmm. question has been called, that's the thing. Uh, and I have heard a second. Um, is there any objection? So this will be closing debate on the amendment about all the activity having a box to go in, possibly both boxes, but not having no boxes. Um, the amendment to about money for expenses versus the benefit of the creator. Um, and then after that, taking our report, possibly with these additional amendments, possibly without, um, and uh, rising and reporting. Is there any objection to calling the question thusly? Hearing none, the first thing we need to vote on is the amendment that ensures, that includes instructions, or sorry, that adds the phrases and which ensures that all activities shall be considered fan or pro with the understanding that what we mean here is that everything has a box or multiple boxes to go in, but not no boxes. All those in favor of the amendment, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against? Thank you. The ayes have it. That was Cliff's. Yep. Okay. And so now we have before us the amendment that asks the committee to consider the distinction between collecting money for expenses related to the work 
verses for the benefit of the creator, and boxes. All those in favor, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against? Okay, I'm going to say the ayes have it. So that is done with the amendments. So now the matter before us is to rise and report. Since rising and reporting wasn't before us when you called the question, I'm just going to ask the sense of the body. Are you ready to vote? I will restate the report, don't worry. Are you ready to vote on rising and reporting? Or do we want to, is there any objection to immediately voting on rising and reporting? I will do so. They will, not she. Um, Kate, what is your parliamentary inquiry? for five minutes so that I can figure this out. Jared, get up here. Um, yes, but you have a brain. Okay, uh, it is 11.07. It is 11.07. We are going to reconvene at hopefully 11.15, but okay. So where we are is that what's before us is the motion to rise and report um, because of sort of the weird way we were doing things. Is there any objection to rising and reporting, or is there anyone still wishing to discuss the matter that we've been given? Okay, seeing none, we're going to vote on rising and reporting. I am going to restate the report. So, the report that will be coming out of this committee is that we refer F.5 to the same committee as F.6, that we instruct that committee to consider not defining based on expectation of sale versus not but perhaps first usage or presentation, to consider whether a global definition of fan or pro, say fan versus pro is necessary, or whether a category by category definition is preferable, that it is the sense of the group that things have multiple uses over their life, if something is used as fan art or fan writing, later sale does not disqualify it from being fanish, things can be both, that asks, uh, instructs the committee to consider the distinction between collecting money for expenses related to the work versus for the benefit of the creator, and uh, that instructs the committee to ensure that all activity shall be considered fan and or pro, that it have a box to go in, that it not have no boxes to go in. So, all those in favor of rising and reporting, please raise the hand. Thank you. All those against, thank you. The ayes have it, and we are out of committee of the whole. There was something that had to be done first. I will now recognize the deputy presiding officer for a report from the committee of the whole. Okay. Presiding officer, it is the report of the committee of the whole. That. <laughs> do, I mean, did you hear it, or do you want me to restate all of it? I'm pretty sure I heard basically everything that we already had. Okay, you're good. Yeah. Okay. Does, is there anyone in the body who wishes me to state it again? Okay. Hearing none that, and so I move that we refer F5 to the same committee as F6 with all of that. I'm giving the secretary a second. Uh, yes, I know we got a second, but I'm giving her a different kind of second. <laughs> so, yeah, the, I'm gonna take that as a point of parliamentary inquiry the head of the committee currently tasked with F6 is Sarah Felix, 
with Lisa Hertel, who is up in the front of the room, so you can give her all your information. Um, so should this item F6 get referred to committee, you can talk to Lisa. F5, thank you. There is a motion on the floor. Lisa, for what purpose does the member rise? We, we can definitely make Sarah very much aware of all the stuff we may or may not be giving to her. Is there an, there is a motion on the floor to refer F5 to the same committee as F6 with instructions as detailed in the report of the committee of the whole. Is there any objection to referring? All right, do we have to debate the motion to refer? Kent, do you wish to speak against the motion to refer? I'm going to look, do, do you feel, the necess feel it necessary to speak in favor of the motion to refer? No. Kent, come to the microphone. In double time. Mr. Chairman, my name is Kent Bloom, and I don't think it's a good idea to refer this at this time. I think many, many things have changed in the community since 1983, and we first started debating all of this uh, fan versus pro. I think the internet has rendered fan versus pro uh, <coughs> obsolete at the very uh, most, most uh, generous. And I think we should be considering whether or not we want to change the category definitions to involve within the community of, uh, of the Worldcon and outside the community that includes the Worldcon, and not whether or not uh, the finances are involved. Things like Patreon and uh, all, all of the various different ways people can, can, can give money for work that is otherwise Spanish or otherwise professional uh, have just rendered it impossible for us to decide whether somebody is making uh, an unreasonable amount of money out of this. I really think we should defeat this, let it go, at least for another couple of years, and see what comes out of the artwork uh, definition. Is there a speech? Members, I'm gonna use Jesse's rule but are you rising for a point of parliamentary? Come up to the microphone. Uh, Mr. Chairperson, I'm Greg Richards, speaking of pronouns. Uh, following the last member's speech, could the chairman just confirm that there is nothing in the proposed instructions to the committee that would prevent the committee from coming back with those recommendations? There is nothing. I believe the member was trying to be specific in that the committee should, or that there should not be any further action on F.5, um, whether that is from the committee or otherwise, but the, theoretically, yes, the committee could take F.5 and throw it in the trash can if they really wanted to. Dave, for what purpose does the member rise? Is it in order to call the question? Yes. Call the question. Second. Second. There's a second. Is there any objection to calling the question on the motion to refer? Seeing none, I will put the question to the body. The question before us is to refer F.5 to the same committee to which F.6 was referred with the instructions as included in the report of the Committee of the Whole. All those in favor, please raise your hands. Hands down. All those opposed, the ayes have it. F.5 is referred to the same committee as F.6. We will now move to F.7. Andrew, for what purpose could the member possibly be rising? I'm just going to remind the member of the existence of the word quasi. 
And I will remind the member that that doesn't necessarily mean anything. <laughs> Andrew Adams, he, him. I move to suspend the rules and refer both F7 and F8 together to a committee of the whole. Is there a second? Second. The motion is to, ref to combine F7 and F8 and refer both of them to a committee of the whole. I will give the committee 15 minutes, which it can extend within its own vote. That's not the word I'm looking for, but it'll work. Um, and the committee will be chaired by my deputy presiding officer. Did he say quasi? Oh, well then, yes. Um, it, that motion has been seconded. Is there any debate on the motion to refer F7 and F8? Fair point. The motion to suspend the rules is neither debatable or amendable, nor amendable. Yeah, I told you, it's going to be inscribed on my forehead. Um, all those in favor of suspending the rules and referring both F7 and F8 to a committee of the whole for 15 minutes, please raise your hands. Hands down. All those opposed? I'm going to say the no's have it. So we are still on F7, yes. Which is on page 18 of the short agenda and 44 of the full version of the agenda. We have 10 minutes of debate time in total. Perry Ann, come to the microphone, please. Harry and Lurie her would it be in order to move to postpone indefinitely? No, postpone indefinitely is only in order during the parliamentary business meeting. Preliminary part, wow. It really isn't that easy, is it? <laughs> Jared.exe has stopped responding. Please reboot your machine. All right. F.7, is there a speech in favor of F.7, Kate Secor? Kate Secor, she, her, I'm actually the maker of the motion, and what I have for you is an amendment, because that's always fun. Um, I would like, can we get the text up? so that everyone can kind of follow along with what I'm doing here. It's, it's a real quick amendment, I promise. Mm -hmm. um, what I would like to do is to amend F7 so that at the end of the first new sentence, right, the one that starts with no series may be nominated that has previously yada, yada, yada. So at the end of that sentence, after it says in its nominated format, to add the clause in the last 10 years. So the effect of the amendment... Whoa, 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 whoa. We're not going to get to debate on the amendment until we've got the amendment and we have stated it. Yeah, that's... All right. Yeah. So I'm going to read all of 3.3.5 as it is suggested to be amended. 3.3.5. Best series. A multi installment science fiction or fantasy story that meets certain criteria, at least one installment of which was published in the previous calendar year. No series may be nominated that has previously won under section 3.3.5, nor may any series containing an individual installment which has won a Hugo Award of any type in its nominated format in the last 10 years. That would mean, and I'm, right, so no series that won once could appear, and 
any series that contains something that won in another category in the last 10 years could not be nominated. So if The Wayward Children had a short story nominated 10 years ago and it won, Shannon couldn't have won last night. Well, the, it couldn't have been nominated, but. I believe that's the biggest challenge. I'm trying to make the motion clear, but yes. Did you have a speech in favor? I do. Go ahead. I am aware that it is, sorry, Casey Corsi here still. I'm aware that it is the sense of this body that this motion, as originally proposed, was too stringent. However, I continue to be of the opinion that the original intent of series was to recognize works which, while the individual installments might not have been Hugo worthy or nominated or whatever word it is that you use for appearing on the final ballot, the series in and of itself has a larger impact or a greater sense of stylistic unity or whatever it is that makes people nominate. Um, and that the intent was to reward those works that have that aggregate quality that might not be able to get nominated as individual pieces. Because there was some concern about, well, what about I wrote a story 20 years ago and then I retooled it into a series and now I can't win forever, uh, I believe that it is in order to insert some kind of restriction on how long ago you must have won for your piece. Um, I kind of pick 10 years out of the hat, because, I don't know, I like 10s. I have 10 fingers most of the time. Um, but I think that that should answer some of the stringency qualities while retaining the effect that I was attempting to achieve of allowing us to recognize that an aggregate work has a different skill level, a different style, a different way of impacting people than an individual work on its own, and that those deserve to be recognized in and of themselves. Is there a speech against the amendment? Lisa, I believe you are rising to make a speech against. Good, I'm glad that I got that right and you weren't trying to do something with the camera. Lisa, Lisa Hayes, she, her. I don't want to put any additional time restrictions on such, such uh, works because if you did a really good series, it's nominated this year, and next year you add one more piece that changes it totally in a different direction, and it's groundbreaking, and we all think it's the most wonderful thing that ever has, we can't say so. Thank you. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor of the amendment? Anyone wishing to speak? Uh, Terry. Terry Neal, she, her. I give you The Lady Astronaut of Mars, which was written in 2012, and it, and it won a Hugo in 2014, and that would have disqualified a series that Mary Robinette might not have even known was going to become a series just because she wrote this really cool story. And I think that we should not put any restrictions on that. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor of the amendment? Anyone still wishing, needing? You want to speak against? Here, Brian O'Brien, he, him. I understand the pain point that the amendment, as recommended, is attempting to resolve. But to me, what I think is particularly important is, as previously noted, uh, there is a difference in acknowledging the value in an individual work in a series and what that individual work is doing versus what it does with its collective works in that series which I trust nominators to be capable of describing and validating on their own terms, which is not, in my opinion, the business of the nomination process to evaluate. We can trust those nominators to engage with that on their own terms and trust what is nominated and what eventually wins as a result. 
I'm going to ask that you just come up here and show your badge to the, um, so, yeah, secretary. That's the word I was looking for. Uh, yeah, to the cart operator. Just write. Yeah, there, there's a sheet of paper over there by the cart operator. Yeah. Is there anyone else wishing to speak in favor of the amendment? Joshua, in favor? Read it or? So you move to call the question. Okay. There is a motion to call the question. I have not. There's a second in the back. Is there any objection to calling the question on the amendment? Seeing none, we will vote on the amendment. Do I need to restate the amendment? It's on the screen. Good. All those in favor of amending the text currently in the agenda as F.7 as shown on the screen, please raise your hands. Hands down. All those opposed? I'm going to say the ayes have it. The ayes have it. The text is amended. Is there a speech against F.7 as a whole? I saw Joshua first. Joshua Krundle, he, him. Um, I move that the uh, that this mo um, that this motion be um, uh, replaced by substitution. Um, with a um, amendment um, stating no series may be nominated, um, adding um, no series may be nominated, which is previously one under section 3.3.5. Uh, Linda, I have shared this with you. I can show it to you later if you haven't seen it. Uh, nor shall any individual installment, which is one a Hugo Award of any type, in the nominated format count toward the length of the series for this award. No series may appear on the ballot in the same year as any of its installments do. All right. Yes. Sure. Pause. Well, what, 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 wait. Yes. I'm going to ask that the maker provide the text to the parliamentarian because the parliamentarian is the one putting stuff up on the screen, and I am going to read as we go along. All the regular text stays up. Oh, okay. You do the swap. I will wait for you. All right. I'm going to attempt to restate. All of the text that is there remains there. The text which is struck beginning with and, remains struck. The text that is added will now read, no series may be nominated that has previously won under section 3.3.4, 3.3.5, 3 nor should any installment included in a series that has previously won a Hugo Award of any type in its nominated format be counted towards the length of the series for eligibility. Correct. So basically, rather than disqualifying something for having an installment that won in the last 10 years, the motion, the amendment would make it such that what has won any time previously would not be counted towards the uh, 24, 240,000 words. Um, yes, uh, and ideally would also not be counted towards new qualification. However, that is redundant since that would re this would retain the, um, uh, the fact that um, a uh, installment uh, that this would already restrict an installment for appearing on the same ballot 
as the series. Um, the reason yeah. for this um, is that, yes, I agree. Um, a series is a different work than its installments. However, if enough of a series has been nominated for the award and has won the award, we have given it enough award that we do not need to give it a further award for series. We've given enough of it that there isn't a series left that hasn't been rewarded. Wow, you get personal delivery from the art show? Must be nice. It's just gonna sit by the back door. Uh, no, it's gonna sit by Claudio. Anyways, that uh, is there a speech against in the red? Tammy Coxon, she, her. As a Hugo administrator, this is already an incredibly difficult category to administer, and that would make it way more complicated. We would be bound to make mistakes, and then the internet would fall on our heads. <laughs> is there a speech in favor of the amendment? Anyone needing? Call the question. There is a motion to call the question. It has been seconded. Is there any objection to calling the question on the amendment? Seeing none, I think the text is now up on the screen. Yes. We are going to vote on the amendment as shown on the screen. All those in favor of the amendment, please raise your hands. All right, hands down. All those opposed? All right, the noes have it. Is there anyone needing to debate on the underlying item of business? Perry Ann. Perry Ann Lurie, she, her. I think this best series category is irretrievably broken. The intent of this business meeting is totally contrary to the intent of the people nominating. The things that have been nominated and won had previous installments that were nominated and won. Uh, the people who are voting do not believe the category is what we believe it to be. And this will make it even worse. That was a speech against? A speech, is there anyone needing to speak in favor of the underlying item of business? Anyone needing to speak, uh, Ron? I move we uh, commit this uh, to, or we send this to a committee to report back at Chengdu with the instructions to consider the inclusion of previously nominated and one works, and also to consider the difference between series that contain complete stories and series that are continuing the same story as in trilogies, quadrilogies, etc that are nearly a continuing story and those differences, which also I believe are at least partially affecting what is and is not being nominated. Thank you. There is a motion to refer F.7 to a committee of my choosing to report back at Chengdu and the committee should consider both previous winning installments and whether there is a difference between wholly standalone works that are part of a series and a series which is only in and of itself a single work and the individual installments are not standalone stories. Is there a second? The motion has been seconded. Do we need to debate the motion to refer? Or I'm Ira, come on up. Sorry, point of privilege. Please keep your please keep your mask over your nose and mouth. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, oh. go ahead. Okay. I don't um, need this was an inquiry of. Just double check. 
Uh, yes, Gary Alexander, they them. Um, the committee can consider what we recommend, but they don't have to do it. That is right. Instructions are not demands. We can ask them to consider something. They can come back with whatever they want. All right. Do we need Linda? For what purpose does the member rise? All right. I'm just going to give you. Oh, Martin's beaten me to it. I I just wish to point out that this. Linda Denneroff Sheeter. Thank you. I just wish to point out that this amendment has been referred to us from a committee, and that. If we don't like it, we should vote it down, but I don't think it needs to go back to a committee. I'm going to rule that as a speech against the motion to refer. Is there a speech in favor of the motion to refer? Joshua, a speech in favor? Yes. All right. The motion is to call all pending questions. That is to vote on the amendment or the motion to refer to committee. And then, assuming that fails, we would vote on, or if that fails, we would vote on the underlying motion. If the motion to refer to committee passes, then it goes to committee and we're done with it for right now. All right, is there any objection to calling all previous questions? Seeing none, we will begin with the motion to refer to committee. All those in favor of referring F.7 to committee to report back to Chengdu, please raise your hands. Hands down, all those in favor, or all those against? The no's have it. Now we will vote on the underlying motion. All those in favor of passing F.7. We didn't, that's what I thought. F.7 as submitted and sending it on to Chengdu for ratification, please raise your hands. Hands down. All those opposed. The no's have it. The motion is defeated. We are now, I know this is very, very exciting, <laughs> on to F.8, the last item of business before this body. It is on page 18 in the short agenda and 44 in the long agenda. It has 20 minutes of debate. Is there anybody wishing to speak in favor of F.8? Joshua, speech in favor? Come on down. Joshua Cronenthal, he, him, I'm the maker of this motion. So this is fundamentally of a different character than F.7. Uh, the F.7 was about whether if anything in the series has previously won, should it be allowed um, on the ballot? We decided, no, yes, it should, of course it should be on the ballot, it's a series. However, there is a long principle um, uh, that we uh, that we take into account regarding the Hugos, that a given single thing should not be up for multiple Hugos at once. We do this for best presentation, where you can't be up for a long presentation and a short presentation at the same time, no matter how much the nominators wanted to. We uh, do the same, um, and uh, uh, and similarly, we don't allow the same work to be up. Uh, among multiple categories, even if it is close enough that it could be in one or the other or both. As such, we should not allow a, um, a work and another work um, uh, that is uh, a larger version of the work, whether, whether it is for best series or not, to be up for a Hugo at the same time. Yes, the nominators will vote for anything they want. They like things. That's their job. They rely on us to make restrictions so that the result is good. They would vote for, if we wanted to say things should be able to vote for um, 
that they should be able to vote for anything they want, we would just have best Hugo. We would have 10 categories, and we wouldn't give them, oh sorry, 10, 10 Hugos, we wouldn't give them categories, the 10 best things would win. We don't do that because, for the purpose of the awards, we make restrictions, and we should make this one. Is there anyone wishing to speak against? I saw Terry raise her hand out of the corner of my eye. See, I can not turn my head and see all sides of the room. Terry Neal, she, her. Uh, it is the will, the, the, the sense of this body in the past. The reason we passed this series is because a series is inherently a different work to a novel or a novelette or a short story. So if we have a novelette for wayward children on the ballot, as well as best series or Murderbot or any of the others, the shorter work is a different work from the series. And there is no reason why one creator cannot have two different works on the ballot. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor of F.8? Perry Ann. Perry Ann Marie, she, her. As far as I can tell, this doesn't say anything about the series can't have an installment also nominated. It says the same work cannot appear in multiple places on the ballot. Is there anyone wishing to speak against F.8? Nicholas. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, and, and thank you, Perry Ann, for that very important point. Uh, Nicholas Wright, uh, Pro and MT, him. Uh, thanks. Um, it's, it's very simple. Um, we have the possibility of restricting the choices made by voters and telling them that they have got it wrong and that this business meeting has got it right, or we can accept what voters actually vote for, rather than putting unnecessary restrictions on them. I think Terry Ann has made the very good point that this amendment actually may not change the status quo at all. Um, I want to make a further point, which is relating to best series. This cannot be about recognizing otherwise forgotten works. The Hugos are a popularity contest, and the things that are the most popular should win. Thank you. Yes. Is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? In the back, in the black striped shirt. Thank you, Chairman. Dave Hook, he, him. Uh, well, I admit. I don't understand some of the technicalities of all this. I depend upon others for that. I'm capable of reading the words, but I don't have deep knowledge about how all these different pieces interact. But I do want to remind the members that when this was voted on for re ratification at DISCON, it was a 35 to 30 vote. Clearly, there were some concerns about how series was working. Um, I believe that this particular uh, act would help with some issues on this, and it would be a great thing for us to be able to move forward on something this year with improving the best series, which does still need some improvement. Um, clearly, it's very popular, but 35 to 30, that's, that's not a ringing endorsement of how things were operating. Is there any member wishing to speak against? Andrew, you stood up first. And rather than see him, we have to call the question. There is a motion to call the question on F.8. It has been seconded. Is there any objection? There is an objection. All those remaining wishing to speak, please raise your hands. All right. We will vote on ending debate on F.8. Eight. All those in favor of ending debate on F.8? Hands down. All those opposed? The ayes have it. We will now vote 
on the underlying item of business F.8. All those in favor of F.8, please raise your hands. Hands down. All those opposed, I'm going to say the no's have it. There is a call for division. I'm going to rule that that is perfectly reasonable. We're going to do a serpentine vote. Martin, please take, assume the position. <laughs> For those who have not been here previously, serpentine works like this. We will go back and forth across the rows in the section on my right, come down the middle section, and then go back through the section on my left, finally counting the head table. P those members who wish to vote in favor will stand. We will count off, and then I will call for those against to stand. So, and right, and those who cannot stand should raise an appendage or a card. All those in favor of F.8, please rise. Twenty-three in favor. All those opposed, please rise or put up an appendage. Anybody on the head table? All right, 23 to 32, the no's have it. F.8 is not sent on to Chengdu. Uh, can I take a breath? Is there any other business that this body needs to take up or any announcements that anyone would like to make before we adjourn. I'm going to start with Dave. Dave McCarty, he, him. Mr. Chairman, I would like to move that when we adjourn, we adjourn in the names of Roger Sims and Earl Korshak. Is there any objection to adjourning as such? Seeing none. Is there any other announcement or item of business? Perry Ann. I move to commend the business meeting staff for their all their hard work. I'm going to rule that doesn't need a second. <laughs> Is there anybody else with an announcement? Kevin. Kevin Stanley, he, him. Most of you know this is actually uh, Mr. Dashoff the Younger's second time in the barrel. Last time we were here before this body, he was in a tearing rush to adjourn this meeting before any of us got a chance to do things. And therefore, he, and therefore he has had to wait six years before receiving his gavel for his first time chairing the meeting. And before I yield the floor, although I am biased, 
and I thank the members for thanking the staff. I would like to call special attention to the work of our videographer and my wife, who has had to work under some extraordinary circumstances that are not any, in any way the fault of the committee or staff, and I thank you for your support. The videographer and the assistant videographer are thanked for their services. I will also, since we've only thanked so far, I think the head table, I will also commend the floor manager for his services and for his parliamentary knowledge. And although it was in the slides and for the first couple of days and I forgot to mention it over the last few, I want to really, really, really thank our cart operator for her services. You people have some really hard names to spell and she has kept up to the best of her abilities and that has been exceedingly awesome. And the deputy presiding officer reminds me to thank Google for paying for said cart services. Thank you, Robot Overlord. Is there anybody else, Smith? I would especially like to thank not only the Wranglers, but all of the people who have done all of this work and in general missed mo most of this convention because they care so much about doing this. So I really, really thank all of you. Is there any other item of business or announcement? Ben. <laughs> uh, changing hats for a moment. Uh, still Ben Yellow, he, him. Uh, people have asked concerning Chengdu, and although it's printed in the progress report, which I am still in the process of, reviewing, uh, I wish to announce that next year's presiding officer will be Donald Eastlake with Kevin Stanley as deputy presiding officer. Is there any other business? Mr. Other Dachon. <laughs> Six years ago, I was upstairs in the convention center in Kansas City, and you were downstairs across the street. So by the time I got notified that you were um, getting ready to adjourn and made my way down, it was too late, and you had adjourned. So uh, personally, I would like to commend you on your service. Thank you. Is there anything else? Do I have a motion to it? Oh, Kent wants to remind me that I do not need a motion to adjourn. Therefore, the business meeting of the 80th World Science Fiction Convention is hereby adjourned sine die in memory of Roger Sims and Earl Korshak. <laughs> <laughs>